I think it's really interesting when you look at our economy and society of how do we create a vibrant, inclusive society where everybody is benefiting. And being involved in this piece of work is part of actually a wider body of work that we're leading on, which is how do we bring together public, private and third sector to start to address some of the really big challenges and turn those into opportunities where we can all collaborate together to do something about them. Now, in terms of housing poverty, and I very deliberately use those words, being an issue in global cities is something that is well documented. We know that in London it is particularly acute. And sometimes it's helpful to bring that down to very real situations. And the fact that I think, as John said, that you know it's an issue for normal people, it's even an issue for people who are really relatively well rewarded in this city. One of my colleagues was relocating down from Scotland and was renting a property. And when he was told the rent of £600, he thought, oh, it's not as bad as they said it would be in London, until he found that that was per week, not per month. So we are one of the most expensive cities in the world to live in, the third most expensive. And that's becoming a really acute issue for employers. We did a survey of our people, and we find that the, uh, most of our people have an average commute now into London of an hour and a half each way. We wonder why we have a productivity crisis in the UK. The amount of time that people are spending sat in metal tubes getting to places, whether that's cars or trains, adding to pollution, the whole ecosystem suffers because we haven't got this problem solved. 90% of our people who are renting say they'd like to buy. I'm sure that we'll hear from Campbell that there are a hell of a lot of people who would just like a home and a roof over their head. And I think that why we're all here is recognising that, yes, you actually have to name the problem, but most importantly, we have to name that this isn't an issue that government alone can solve. It's an issue that's in all of our interests to get involved and to do something about. Now, in the report, we've got some interesting statistics that start to actually really help us to think about some of the challenges in a wider context. 21% of businesses that we surveyed are actually thinking of moving their businesses outside of London, taking their business away because they cannot house their employees affordably in our capital city. And that is something that really does need to be addressed. Equally in the report, are some interesting things that people are doing to try to address those issues. And as John said, I'm sure some of them will be things that will appeal to you. However, within here, what it doesn't really address is the issue of supply. Many of the things that we're all doing to encourage people and support people in actually getting access to housing is actually increasing demand in the city. And I think many of us will notice that post-Brexit, there is either the opportunity for calamity or a perfect storm to allow us to choose to do some different things. We know that the commercial property sector is looking to be going through some fairly turbulent times. Certainly overnight, I was seeing the reports with the pound against the dollar hitting another 30-year low, that there are investors who still want to invest in London with the pound at a low rate. Now, our opportunity and our challenge is how to make sure that as there is investment, as building costs potentially go lower, potentially, I haven't got my crystal ball, I'm just making a surmise that it's possible, um, how do we then bring our efforts together to make that turn into actual additional housing supply in the marketplace? And there are some interesting people here, I can see Rhea Silva. Like, if you want to speak to someone really interesting doing something disruptive, and I'm not able to show Ria's video this morning, but um, do talk to her. Ria's um, <coughs> just launched on the Social Stock Exchange in London, looking at doing something really disruptive called Church Hotel, which is actually looking at how can you make really good quality, eco-friendly supply available quickly, and importantly, cheaply, and building community so that people aren't just put into boxes on their own and left to feel they're paying a high rent to live in a, in a garage, but actually so they're part of a community that gives them a platform to do something different. So there are people in this room who have got different disruptive ideas on how we can solve this problem. 
Now, the call today isn't one where we're sitting here saying we've got all the answers, because I don't think anyone has. If we did, we'd have solved it by now, right? I think the opportunity is saying that actually it's not down to James on his own to do this. It's not down to business on its own to do this. But what if? What if by working together and saying, these are the outcomes we want to deliver, what are the opportunities that are presented in post-Brexit, what are the new ways that we could actually look at solving this issue to increase supply and get that made available to the people who need it most? That if we can collaborate together with open minds, then we really could do something different and transformational, and actually could do that quite quickly. So for me today, it's a call to action to get involved, because I tell you, I don't know about you, I'm really sick of sitting back and seeing it not happening and not changing, and our firm wants to step in and get involved, and I really hope that many of you in the room do too. Thank you.